Christ and God. Father God, again, that we gather here in this your place. This is your house, oh God. You're the owner, the creator. You stand as the final authority over all things that we, that we encounter over, all things that affect us. So God, we come surrendering to you, acknowledging that you are God. We come before you, dear God, with a desire to to lift you, to praise you, to worship you, to know you better. We come, oh God, putting our lives down at your feet. Yes. Pray, dear Lord, that your will be accomplished in, with, yes. and through us. Yes. 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 God, we know that we've not earned this privilege. We have done everything, in fact, to disqualify us. Yes. Yes. But because of your love, your grace, and your mercy, yes. You will permit us, oh God, to enter into your presence. And you allow us, oh God, to put your name on our lips. So we thank you, oh God. And we pray, Lord, that you would continue to speak to us, encourage us, strengthen us, that we might live before you holy, whole, and complete. That your life in us by the transmitted to us. So God, we celebrate you. We honor you. We worship you. We bring your word we got in our lives. This is the blessed name of him who's yet alive. Jesus, who is the Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Give an honor, give an honor to Almighty God. Amen. 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 Judges chapter 6, verse 22. When Gideon realized that it was the angel of the Lord, he exclaimed, O oh, sovereign Lord, I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. But the Lord said to him, Peace, do not be afraid. You are not going to die. Glory. 
So Gideon built an altar to the Lord there and called it, The Lord is Peace. To this day it stands an Oprah of Abiathrites. That same night that the Lord said to him, Take the second bull from your father's herd and one, the one seven years old, tear down your father's altar to Baal and cut down the asteroid pole beside it. Then build a proper kind of altar to the Lord, your God, on the top of this height, using the wood of the asteroid pole that you cut down. Offer the second bull as a burnt offering. So Gideon took ten of his servants and did as the Lord told him. But because he was afraid of his family and the men of the town, he did it at night rather than in the daytime. In the morning, when the men of the town got up, there was Baal's altar demolished, and the astral pole beside it cut down, and the second bull sacrificed on the newly built altar. Chapter 7, verse 15. When Gideon heard the dream and its interpretation, he worshiped God. He returned to the camp of Israel and called out, Get up. The Lord has given the Midianite camp into your hands. Praise our God. Amen. We're, still, we're, still, we're still looking at it. We're still looking at this thing, this strange strength that God gives us. But just for a little while today, we we're going to consider together this strength that comes to liberate us. It's a liberating strength, this strange strength. We, we started out talking about this incredible strength of God, this, this strength that, that has no proof within this, this natural world. It's that outside of the world. All we can do is experience it and know that it didn't come from here. Because God has done something, does things, divinely they, where he acts upon nature or the natural. And, and he surpasses even what's called supernatural because, see, supernatural is just natural divine in a way that says no normal people can't do it. But God, God is even beyond what we call supernatural. He enters the realm that over only God dwells called the divine. He's only, he's, he's, he's in that place where only God can walk and only God can exist. So he is incredible. And he, because he's incredible, he acts in and with and through our lives, making us incredible as well. Yeah. We can do some incredible things. Now, I'm not incredible by myself, on my own. Uh -huh. I need to be connected to an incredible God yeah. to reflect his incredible nature yeah. into a world that don't fully understand what incredible really yeah. is. Go ahead now. And when, when I do that, we also discover that we, we, we become awestruck. People get awestruck in God because we just can't explain it. It, it creates wonder and amazement. It, it's terrifying and, it, and it wonderful all at the same time. It brings this sense of excitement and awe and reverence and, and fear, excitement that we want to get closer, but, but no one gets so close because can somebody please talk to him for me because I'm not quite sure what's going on because we have this all oh, this this we're all struck by the very nature of yeah. who god is yeah. and, and because we're connected to this incredible god that strikes all we ourselves become awesome we don't, right. don't understand why you didn't fall apart why you didn't just break down why you didn't yes. just give up and quit they don't understand how you kept the faith through that sickness they don't know how you kept continue to sing praise song and you were broke as a branch during the storm. They don't understand. They don't, they don't understand how, how you could do all that and be all that because, because there's this awesome nature that flows from an awesome God that flows in you and makes you stand awesome without explanation, creating yeah. wonder in your world. Yes, yes. yes. But, 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 but the truth is that many times we deal with situations and circumstances that's like a, a, a stain on a paper piece of uh, clothing. Uh -huh. No matter what you do, it just won't go away. <laughs> you don't want to throw the suit away. You don't want to get rid of the shirt. But there's a stain there, and, and you don't really know how it got there. It there. You keep trying to get rid of it. You want to move it. You want to get it out the way, but it won't there. So you cover it up. You, you try to hide it. You wear a vest. You wear a sweater. You do something because you don't want to get rid of the piece of clothing, but it got a stain. Yes, yes. And there it is. 
sometimes the state seems to be more prominent than others. Come yeah. on, come on. You're wearing it something, and some well meaning somebody come up and say, Oh, you got something on your shirt. And, and, you, you, and you want to say, I know I got it. Yeah. I've been trying to get rid of it, I've been trying to, to wash it down. And sometimes that's how our lives are. We have stains on our lives yeah. that we try to get rid of. We want to get over. And, and, and we do things that we pray and we fast and, and we read our Bibles and, and we go out and get boyfriends and girlfriends and get, change one job for another. We, we, we do stuff trying to get rid of the stain on our lives and we try to cover it over and shield it. But then here comes some well-meaning somebody that reminds us that you're still broken. You're still messed up. You still got a stain in your life. You done passed 50 dozen liquor stores and this one little corner store happened to be selling liquor. They ain't got no business selling that liquor. Right. Of so. And there you go. And there, there it is. Uh -huh. You weren't expecting that stain just jumped up out of nowhere. There it is. Uh -huh. And you see the stain. You try. You try. How, how do I break free? How do I get free of this thing that seems to keep reaching out and pulling me back? How do I break free of this thing that I, 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 try, I cut it off and I said I ain't going to do it no more? I promised my mom, I promised my dad, I promised myself, I promised my God. I'm not going to do this anymore. And he reaches out and grabs me. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. I tell myself, yeah. I'm not going to give up to this spirit of feeling lonely no more. I'm going to be all right by myself. And as soon as I said that, I start feeling lonely and I can't. We get rid of the stain. How do we get rid of that stain? That thing that, that won't just let us just go away. But it won't leave. How do we, how do we deal with that? And then the Bible says stuff like, he who the Son set free is free indeed. So, so God, are, are you going to set me free? I, I'm with you. I'm following after you. Set me free. So is the word right yeah. and the stain wrong? Yeah. Is the stain a problem that's not really a problem? I'm just imagining. Yeah. Or does the word have an issue? Okay. Mm. Is God really set me free? Jesus. And the stain is just a figment of my imagination? Or is somehow the word not working for me? Yeah. And the stain is still there? How do I deal with this thing? We come up against that. But then Paul throws something out and says, don't you realize, don't you know, that the one that you submit yourself, commit yourself to, to serve, that you're a slave of that one? Mm -hmm. So Paul has a, Paul is suggesting that after God has set us free, after we, the one who the Son set free is free indeed, mm -hmm. after he set us free, we can choose to go back. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Oh. So maybe I'm a slave of church. Mm, well. Maybe I'm not a slave because the master is so powerful. Maybe I'm a slave because I'm not strong enough to stay free. Okay. Maybe. Okay. Mm. Maybe. Mm. Just maybe. Mm. The problem is not the stain. Mm. The problem is I like this shirt too much. Uh -huh. And the shirt got the stain. Jesus. And I can't have the shirt without the stain. So I try to deal with the stain because I won't give up the shirt. Yeah. Come on, Pastor. When I love my shirt more than I love my freedom. What happens when I love what I'm what I'm involved is too? How do I get free and stay free? Yeah. See, that's really the issue. And get it helps us with this thing. You see, because when, when I feel like what God has assigned me to do is either undoable by me, or I simply don't want to do it, I start questioning God. God, are you sure I'm the one? God, are you sure this, you see, it, it either is too big for me, or I don't want, I don't want no parts of it, God. I'm kind of happy in my sin. I got a, I got, I got, I got a lowercase sin. I got a sin that, an acceptable sin. I got a socially agreeable sin. I, my sin, I don't go to jail for my sin. I don't get on any kind of list for my sin. My sin is acceptable. Yeah. 
keep a shirt. Lord, so just maybe. Oh my God. Just maybe the sin that we have, we don't want we, we don't want to just get rid of it totally. So we make the choice to serve the shirt. Just put on the mask. Just don't act like that around folk who know you. Just put on the mask. Just use the right words in the right language. Just put on the mask. Only act like that in school. Just just put on the mask. And you can hide your skin. See, because, because when we start dealing with that, and we don't want to get rid of it, or we think it's too big, we start, we start dealing with God as though God has made a mistake. Uh, God, uh, uh, don't you see where I'm at? Don't you see what I'm dealing with? Okay. And you're going to call me out? You're going to tell me that I need to do better? Uh, God, don't you see that the people told me I was born like this, why I can't stay like this? There's, uh, some, there's something wrong here. in the God? Why are you going to call me out? Just, why, why, why are you going to say it's me? I ain't the only one in, this, in a wide press trying to hide thrashing weed. Look, you do over there. He hide too. Why you ain't talking to him like this? You see, we want, we want to deal with God like, well, God, don't you see my problem? Okay. If I, can, if, I can, if I can throw back on God and challenge God over my problem, I don't have to submit to his authority. Yeah. Because now the, the focus is yeah. on the fact yeah. that I love my shirt, and the focus is on the fact that you let it get stained. Oh, Why did you let my shirt get stained? Oh, oh, Why did you do it? See, I ain't got to, I ain't got to fess up to the fact that I don't like a stained shirt. Okay. I can blame you for letting it get stained. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So we know we have to have is that I'm getting this and built from how you gonna call me a mighty man of valor? You see, when, when, when we allow that to happen, what we what goes on is that we we allow our problem mm. to become so big and so important to us that it becomes uh, it loses all sense of nat uh, natural national or no natural there we go all sense of natural uh, principles and qualities. Okay. In other words, the enemy becomes so big he becomes dehumanized. He become he becomes something other than he becomes God's opposite. Oh, Pastor, come on. Yeah. Yeah. See, yeah. When, we, when, we, when we see we start having problems, we see it as a counterbalance to God. Uh -huh. that, that somehow, that somehow, the evil in my life Ooh. is as powerful as the possible good in my life. Ooh. So we want to say, God, I'm dealing under the evil, uh -huh. but I need some good to show up uh -huh. because we make it so big that we can't see around it to see God. Uh -huh. and, and so we say, obviously, uh -huh. that right now this evil got more power. The evil don't have more power, the evil got more you. Because when we give ourselves to it, we need to start serving it. So what we say, what we say is that, that this thing is powerful. No, it ain't powerful, it's consuming. They're not the same thing. You see, powerful can come in and impose its will. Consuming just eat all your feet. So, so when, when we start feeding it, it consumes. To make you come if you don't want to. I don't have to go get drunk. I don't have to let you in. I can't get my key back. I don't have to. Because you're not powerful. But you will consume all my feet. You'll take all my power. So we have, we have this issue. We get so big. It makes us hide in my presses. So big. So big, the standing started going pretty soon, huh? and all we can see is the is the the problem, the the standing, the, the problem that we have. Because all we can see, because it's terrible, and we're we're not liberated, we're enslaved, we're God's people, but we're in chains. We and and one of the reasons that's true, y'all stay with me right here. One of the reasons why that's true. It's because we confuse mm. wanting the end of bondage with desiring liberation. Okay. Mm. Mm -hmm. See, just because bondage in don't make you liberated. Okay. Okay. Mm. okay. Mm. Bondage.
bondage, the end of bondage is to be freed from something. Okay, okay. And most of us, that's all we want. We just want to be free from something. I want to be free from this day, free from this man, free from this drug, free from this house, free from this job, free from these kids, free from my stuff. Yes, I want to be free from it. You see, that's, that's really all we want. That we feel the pain, we feel the difficulty, we feel the, we feel, we feel the weight of it to the point that we want to be free from it. That's, that's, that's not liberation. You see, just just to be free from something is not enough to keep you free. Oh my God! That's why that's why you can be free from alcohol for a week and go back. You can be free from that Negro for seven months and go back. You can be free.
after I drop the chains, I become his yoke trap. I serve him. You see, that's, that's, what, that's what he does. But how, how does that happen? You know, because you get in I, how, the, how do you get from thrashing wheat in a wine press to being 301 whooping thousands and thousands of people? How do you, how do you get from, from this to that? I've been trying to get out of my stuff for a long time. How did you get your shirt clean? How did you get your shirt clean? How did you get it? 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 Well, if you look, God has a way of letting you walk with him. Okay. See, the problem is we don't really want to walk with him. Okay. We want to sit home and wait for him to come and do it. We get, we, get, we get tired, we get sick, we get hurt. We want to sit down and say, will you see the, the, the divine ambulance? <laughs> Somebody to protect you. And when, when, when he messed around 
came to hurt him to fight the real enemy. Yeah. Don't you know that the real enemy are those who come to hurt you? Come we on. wrestle not against flesh and blood. Right. The real enemy's outside the camp. Yeah. The real enemy ain't your brother or your sister just because they said the wrong thing, act the wrong way, or they mess around and called you the wrong name. They ain't the real enemy. Right. The real enemy's out there somewhere. The real enemy's there fighting against God. And we spend so much time fighting each other that we miss the fact that there's an enemy that's always trying to destroy all of us. Yeah. 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 But, 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 but see, when, when, when Gideon messed around with Saul, God's hand of protection, he had enough courage to say, look, y'all, come on. I know you wanted to hurt me. I know you wanted to take my life. I know you didn't like what I did. I was only doing what God told me. I know you didn't understand it. But come on. God done moved on me. I done blew this trumpet. Get it now. We got an enemy to go for. When you see God protect you, you get a little bit of courage to do his will. Yeah. But yeah. you'll never know he'll protect you mm. if you don't mess around with experience it. Yeah. See, experience led to obedience. Mm -hmm. yeah. Obedience led to a need of protection. Yeah. God protected. The protected one now has the courage to go to do God's will further. Yeah. And then, and then he messed around and heard. heard. The enemy acknowledges the authority of his God. Come on, now. Uh, Come on here. Go ahead, sir. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh. The one who had no respect for God. Yes. Acknowledge how powerful God is. Come on, Pastor. At a time that the one who loved God yes. needed to hear it. Yes. The enemy preached the sermon uh -huh. that led to his own destruction. <laughs>
something that he should have could have been gone. Okay. But then the grace of God spoke out and said, look, chill out. Said, no, 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 no. You're all right. You're not going to die. And when Gideon found out that God wasn't going to let him die, Gideon didn't go around and live in greater sin. He didn't go and commit bigger sin. He didn't try to justify his sin. He didn't say, well, my sin must be all right. He didn't change a pint of liquor for a pint of liquor.
The Bible says that our weapons are not carnal. Yes. We're minded to the pulling down. Yes. You see, we discredit things like prayer. What that gonna do? Come on. We discredit things like worship. What is that? Right. We see why I go to church. I know God. God is everywhere. Right. We discredit our, our most powerful weapons. Jesus. Yeah. We fight the devil on his ground, on his terms. Come on, Pastor. We don't use what God has given us. Come on. We don't. We don't come together. We're not. The, we're not the body that fights against. We're individuals who say, "I go there and then I leave." Most of us got more unsafe friends than we do Christian friends. Jesus. Most of us spend more time in circles of non-believers than we do believers. Come on. Most of us will tolerate stuff from folk in a bar more than we'll tolerate from folk in a church. On, we'll let folk. We'll let folk talk about us and get put stuff out on Facebook and excuse it. But let somebody come out there. You see, 
When you keep worshiping God, you're not ashamed. You keep worshiping God. You don't build an altar, you become the altar. Yeah. 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 He became the place. Yeah. And you don't have to kill a bull, you are the sacrifice. Yeah. So there he was. Yeah. He became the altar. Yeah. He became the sacrifice. Yeah. He worshiped. Yeah. You see, you already got yeah. pumped up. You already got to hear the right song. If you already got some back, that thing's going right. Before you can worship and glorify God, even there's too many Pose, or you still up on the mountain? But when I can come to the place where I become the altar, where all the sacrifice before God. And when He stood, when He stood, when He stood, after being the sacrifice on the altar, when He stood, He went straight back, woke everybody up, and did what He was afraid to do before. Get up. Get up. It's time to go fight. Yeah. God has given us the midnight game. Get up. Get up. It's time to go fight. God has given you victory over that stain on your shirt. Get up. It's time to fight. God has given you victory over your love off the shirt. Thank you.